for bright and beautiful music. This is KIXI AM and FM, Seattle. Check your time. It's exactly 10 p.m. CBS News. Administration officials say President Ford probably will announce a major energy policy decision before he leaves for Europe next week. I'm Jim Kilpatrick reporting on the CBS radio network. The main options before the president are to add another dollar per barrel to imported petroleum and initiate by executive action a gradual phase-out of price controls on domestic crude oil. Congress failed to act on an energy conservation bill before it recessed for a 10-day holiday. The lawmakers left behind several other major pieces of legislation unfinished in the holiday rush, including a $15 billion supplemental appropriations bill, housing legislation, the strip mine veto, and the determination of who won New Hampshire's Senate seat in last fall's election. The Senate has authorized its Intelligence Committee to examine in individual income tax returns as part of an investigation of the Internal Revenue Service. The resolution was designed to enable a Senate committee to investigate surveillance techniques used by the IRS. Access to individual tax returns was prohibited by law to anyone outside the IRS or other approved executive branch authorities. Former Vice President Spiro Agnew may be in trouble over his income taxes again, this time with the state of Maryland. The Comptroller has forwarded to the Maryland Attorney General a state income tax case involving Agnew. No specifics were revealed. After published reports disclosed Agnew had paid some back taxes to the federal government, state officials said they would follow Maryland law. It says anyone who is required to pay additional federal taxes and penalties must also pay additional state taxes and penalties. More CBS News after this. In God We Trust, America Speaks. In the words of Eleanor Roosevelt, all human beings have feelings. All human beings have needs and temptations and stresses. Men and women who live together through long years get to know one another's feelings, but they also come to know what is worthy of respect and admiration in those they live with and in themselves. If at the end one can say, this man used to limit the powers that God granted him. He was worthy of love and respect and of the sacrifices of many people, made in order that he might achieve what he deemed to be his task. Then that life has been lived well, and there are no regrets. Presented by the Catholic Communications Foundation. Authorities in Beirut are waiting to see if the latest ceasefire will hold. Details from Don Webster. For the third time in two days, a ceasefire has been announced in the Beirut street fighting. The first two such declarations were completely ignored, and it's too early to say whether this third one will hold. The Lebanese government says that this time, the Lebanese army is moving in to reinforce the ceasefire. If that happens, it may well work, but until now, the army has stood by and not interfered between the two warring factions. The battling is between Palestinian commandos, many of whom live in a refugee camp in a Beirut outskirts, and the right-wing phalanges who oppose the commandos' presence in Lebanon. Many of those phalanges live in an apartment neighborhood adjacent to the refugee camp. The leader of the phalanges has recommended that the camp be closed entirely, but that is not likely to happen. Don Webster, CBS News, Beirut. General Motors and Chrysler are recalling almost 6,000 workers despite the sluggish sales of new cars. Indefinite layoffs at GM now stand at 105,000 workers. Indefinite layoffs at Chrysler are now about 40,000. Automobile output for 1975 is 22% behind last year. The Justice Department has charged the Detroit suburb of Ferndale, Michigan, with operating a racially segregated school system. The department says Ferndale has one all-black elementary school and nine that are virtually white. More after this. Hear ye, hear ye. A new bicentennial weekend special with CBS News correspondent Charles Kerault. There are some who say that Molly Pitcher was only a legend. There was no such person. 
But there's a historian in New Jersey who thinks he knows the well she used to draw water for Washington's troops. Come down the side roads of the Revolution on Exploring America 1776, May 24th and 25th, on the CBS Radio Network. This is Nikki Giovanni speaking for the March of Dimes. I really like words, and as a poet, my work depends on them. Sometimes, just a few words can carry a very important message, like help fight birth defects for the health of our future generations. So join the March of Dimes today and find a way. The first wedding has been held at the refugee compound in Camp Pendleton, California. Actually, it was a double wedding. Two Vietnamese sisters who sewed their own wedding gowns married two brothers in a Roman Catholic ceremony. There was a reception afterwards in a tent, but there are no immediate plans for a honeymoon trip. I'm Jim Kilpatrick, CBS News. CBS for Seattle, KIXI. Six minutes past 10 o'clock. Stay tuned for the CBS Radio Mystery Theater over KIXI AM. With the weatherman calling for occasional rain, showers and periods of partial clearing Friday and Saturday. Lows both nights in the mid to upper 40s, with highs both days in the upper 50s. Southerly winds 10 to 20 miles an hour, with occasional higher gusts. Presently downtown, cloudy and 50 degrees. Winds are out of the south-southwest at 15 miles an hour. The dew point at 43. The barometer, 29.99, it's rising. Out at the airport, cloudy skies, 48 degrees. Radio Mystery Theater is next on KIXI AM in Seattle. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. If your nerves are steady enough, I'd like to be your guide into and through, we hope, a place and a time where things happen which we ordinarily think of as supernatural, where grisly events do not necessarily have their moment and go their way as time moves ahead, but may stay and stay and still stay. The home we enter first is not the sinister place I'm talking about. It's a well-appointed apartment, bright, cheerful, normal in every way, occupied by Ken Harris, who at this moment is reading a novel, and his wife, Martha, who is working on a needlepoint project. Well, now, who can that be at this time of night? Only one way to find out. Oh, couldn't have waited two more pages. I was about to find out who'd done it. <laughs> Oh, hello, Stu. Can't... Hey, come on in. Let me take your coat. Uh, no, no, I, I can't stay. I just wanted to let you know that I've, I, I've been out to the lake. Uh, Shadow Lake? What on earth for? Well, the thing is, Ken, your cottage has been broken into. Unless somebody you know is out there. Well, no, nobody. But what, what makes you think? I saw lights and I, I saw a shadow move across the living room window. No question about it, Ken. There was somebody in your cottage. Our mystery drama, Return to Shadow Lake, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Fielden Farrington and stars Nat Polan and Joan Lovejoy. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When you shop your friendly Tradewell store, well, there's never any mystery about the values you receive. You see, Tradewell offers the best food, the best selection, the best service, and at the best possible price. So don't be mystified about shopping for food. And this week, your friendly Tradewell is 
headquarters for Memorial Day food savings. Some of the savings you'll find include fresh Washington-grown grade-A fryers, whole body, 59 cents a pound. Nally's potato chips, three-pack, the nine-ounce package, 55 cents. A high-grade ballpark franks, regular or beef variety, one-pound package at 98 cents. Or Hunt's pork and beans, 31-ounce tin, 38 cents. The shop trade well for quality and value. And remember, your friendly trade well is headquarters for your Memorial Day food savings. I live on the street with my mommy and daddy. I have a little sister, too. It's a lot of fun, most of the time. Except when my little sister takes my toys. She's yucky. Our family had a problem once, and mommy and daddy were upset with each other a lot. My mommy called the people at the Mental Health Association, and they helped us. I guess mommy didn't know what to do, and the Mental Health Association gave us information and several places where we could go. I bet they could help anybody. Mommy said she found them in the telephone book. They were so nice. Daddy said they help people with all kinds of problems. I bet they could help you if you needed it. I wonder if they could talk to my little sister about playing with my toys. Hmm. Your Mental Health Association. People who care. People who can make a difference. When you come to think of it, there's something rather sad about a summer cottage in midwinter. Its purpose is negated. Its rooms, built to contain the sounds of pleasure, are silent. Its meaning has been stripped from it. It is empty. Or should be. But according to Stu Ralston, the summer cottage owned by Ken and Martha Harris out on Shadow Lake is not empty. And whoever is in it has no business there. You say you saw lights in the windows, Stu? That's right. Well, but all the utilities have been turned off for the winter. There's no electricity. Well, we left a couple of, of hurricane lamps in the utility room, Ken. Couldn't somebody have found those? It was a dim light. It uh, could very well have been a lamp or even a couple of candles. Hmm. Did you notice if there was a light in the utility room window, Stu? Um, no, I, I don't think there was. A, all I was aware of was the light in the living room and... And the shadow of a man walking up past the front window, or maybe a woman, I, I couldn't be sure. Stu, what on earth were you doing out there in the first place? Oh, I, I just thought I'd drive out, you, you know. Looking for Claudia. Did you actually think you'd find Claudia out there? No, 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 of course not. I, well, I, I suppose that was in the back of my mind, but I didn't really expect to find her or, uh, our cottage was empty. Stu, Claudia has been missing since... Well, it's almost a year now. Do you think it, it's healthy to keep on this way? <laughs> I haven't thought much about what's healthy and what isn't, Martha. The, the police have Claudia listed as a missing person. Case closed. Well, that's all right for them. They, they went married to her. They didn't love her. I do. I can't just give her up that easily. But out at Shadow Lake, in the middle of winter? Well, she used to go there when she was upset about things. E even in the wintertime, she, she liked to be alone sometimes. Stu, I know it's a hard thing for you to believe, but don't you think it's, it's likely that Claudia just took off on her own? She was always restless. Claudia might have left me, yes. But she would never have gone without telling me she was going. No, I... I wouldn't have thought so. So, what does that leave? She was abducted. Maybe killed. I, I, I don't know. If she could, I believe she'd have got in touch with me by this time. I, I just... Well, I just wanted to let you know about the cottage. How about a brandy, Stu? No. No, no, thanks. I, uh, I have to get back to my place. Stu, don't let it just devour you this way. You're very sweet to be concerned, Martha. Uh, I'll be all right. Ken, will you 
come to bed? Are you going to spend the whole night roaming around worrying? Well, I'm disturbed about the cottage. I think I'll drive out there tomorrow. To Shadow Lake? Yeah. What in the world for? Well, I want to see if any damage has been done. You know, just check up on things. <laughs> well, I think it's silly. You haven't been feeling too well. Uh, and I don't think going out there all upset would be any good for you. I'm all right. The drive into the country will do me good. But you don't have to go. Oh, I'll, I'll go if you insist on going. Well, I'd really rather you didn't. Why? Well, what if they should still be out there? I'll pick up a club and go for them. Same as you. Up. What? Oh. Did you set the radio clock for 7.30? Yeah, I, I want to get an early start. Oh. Oh, I, I forgot. You still want to go out there, huh? The time is 7.32 on a miserable Sunday morning. Heavy snow warnings are out throughout the area. Motorists are advised to stay off the highways if possible. An accumulation of 5 to 8 inches of snow is predicted. The temperature right now is 18 degrees and it won't get out of the 20s all day. Cloudy and cold tomorrow with a strong possibility of continuing snow. So if you're in bed, stay there. If you're not, go on back. Well, so much for driving out to Shadow Lake. I've driven in snow before. Well, you're still not thinking about going, are you? Can you hear what the man just said? Yeah, he said it's snowing. Five to eight inches. Oh, it never snows as much as they say it's going to. I've got studded snow tires. Even got chains in the trunk if I need them. Ken, why are you so determined? It, it, it's way out of proportion. Can't you see that? Well, I told you, you don't have to go. Well, actually, what you told me was you'd rather I didn't go. No? I'll go. Ken, come on. Enough is enough. Let's turn back. I, I can't even see where we're going. That's all right, as long as I can. Now just be still and let me drive. All right. We've managed to get as far as Gibbsville, the last civilized outpost before the lake. Now look at it, Ken. It's practically buried under now, and the snow's coming down harder than ever. Now will you be sensible for once in your life, and, and, and let's turn around. I want to stop at Potts Grocery. Why, for heaven's sake? I want sake? to pick up a few things. Is that the store? Doesn't look the same as in the summer. Nothing does. What do you want to buy, anyway? Well, if it's really going to keep on snowing like this, we might be stuck at the cottage overnight. And that first... Oh, Ken. Well, if it should, we should have to stay over. We'd better load up on food. Ken, I don't want to spend the night out there. We'll freeze. That's a summer cottage. We can't spend the night out there. Sure, we can. We've got the fireplace. It'll keep the living room comfortable enough. We have to sleep over. There are plenty of blankets. And what are you going to burn? The furniture? For heaven's sake, Martha. There's a good half quart of firewood in the utility room. There is? <laughs> Funny, I never noticed it. How often do you go into the utility room when we're out there in the summertime? Well, just the same. Come on, come on. Let's, let's get those groceries. The roads up ahead aren't getting any better, and we sit here arguing. You know, I, I still can't understand how I could spend practically a whole summer in that cottage and... Never notice all that firewood. I guess you're just not very observant. Been there since the middle of last winter. Go ahead. Howdy, Mr. Harris. Hi. Mr. Harris, I'm surprised to see you folks out this way, weather carrying on like it is. What can I do for you? Well, we want a box load of provisions, just in case we have to stay overnight at the cottage. Martha, you know what we'll need better than I do. Well, just take one of those baskets, Miss Harris, and help yourself to whatever catches your fancy. <laughs> 150 degrees below zero and cooking over an open fire. Boy, this is going to be a lot of fun. You better get some candles, too, dear. The cottage, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Stu Ralston was out here last night, and he thinks our place was broken into. I thought I'd better just check it out. Now, you ain't seriously figuring on going all the way out to Shadow Lake in this kind of weather, are you, Mr. Harris? We Yes, I thought we would. Well, taint none of my affair, of course, but I sure wouldn't if it was me doing it. Not for love or money, I wouldn't. Oh, well, it won't be easy, I suppose, but 
I want to make sure nothing's been tampered with. Ain't going to let up for a spell. You can count on that. Not that I think for a minute you're going to make it out to Shadow Lake. You don't. Not for a minute. Not up that wagon track to the lake itself. Okay. Well, this ought to hold us. You want to add it up, Mr. Potts? Sure thing. Got everything you need now? Mm, I guess so, yes. All right, let's see. Dollar seventy-six forty-three. If you ask me, I don't think we're going to need any of it. What did Mr. Potts say about going out to the lake? Took a damn view. And you're not going to pay any attention, I suppose. You know something, Martha? You're really getting a little tiresome about this. What? Twelve dollars and ninety-seven cents it comes to, folks. Seems like an almighty lot. We're but... used to it. Let's see, ten. Let's see if I have three ones. And two, yeah. Here you are. And here's your three cents change. I thank you. Come on, Martha. You take my advice, folks. You'll turn right around and go back. Gonna be a mess up there toward Shadow Lake. Please, Ken. He knows what he's talking about. He's a native. Come on, come on. We may not even be able to turn around if we go much further. I don't intend to turn around. off to the cottage up ahead there. Yes, there's the old oak with broken limb. Are you actually going to try to drive up that ruddy little lane to the cottage? Doesn't look good, does it? No, no. I guess I better not try it. Oh, thank goodness. Well, we've had a nice Sunday morning drive. Now I just hope we can get back. Listen, there's plenty of gas in the tank. Are you, uh, you sit here. Keep the motor idling so the heater works and you'll be perfectly comfortable. I'm going to walk back to the cottage. Oh, Lord, give me no, strength. I, I, I've got boots and fleece-lined gloves and a warm coat, and I've got a cap that pulls down over my ears. Now, why shouldn't I walk? Snow up to his armpits, and he wants to know why I shouldn't walk. Oh, what is it? A mile, mile and a quarter? If I can't walk that far, snow or no snow, I'd better give up. Okay, I'm coming with you. Are you out of your mind? Sure, we both are. Well, what are we sitting here for? Let's get going. I... I can't, can I? I just can't. I, I told you that before we started. All right. Do you think you can make it back to the car alone? Well, are you going ahead to the cottage? Oh, thanks. I'll, I'll make it somehow. Don't, don't lie down. And this, this, don't you know better than to lie down in snow now? I have to. I can't. I'm so tired. Stay on your feet. Ma Martha. Just, just a little. No, don't lie down. If I can get this box of groceries, blood, and this tree for... There. Now, now, if Martha, I told you not to lie down. Just for a little while. All right. I can carry you if I have to. Can can we go back? It's further back to the car now than it is to the cottage. You, you, you can't. I can't carry you. We could we could rest a couple of minutes, no. couldn't we? No, no. If we stop now, we stop for one minute huh? to rest. Now we're dead. <sighs> say it isn't a particularly unpleasant way to die, freezing to death. There's no pain. You simply drift off to sleep and uh, that's all there is to it. Seems to me the only people who can tell you with any authenticity what it's like to die, no matter what way, are the people who have died and they don't come back to talk about it, do they? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Hi, I'm Burl Ive. 
You know, I've been telling you that Uncle Ben's long grain and wild rice is a wonderful way to make an ordinary meal a great meal and to keep a great meal from becoming ordinary. That's because it's a delicious combination of Uncle Ben's rice, natural wild rice, herbs, and seasonings. It has a really distinctive taste just about every grown-up loves. But what about those everyday family meals? Well, now Uncle Ben's has a way to make them special, too, with Uncle Ben's new fast cooking long grain and wild rice. It's flavored with a delicious but milder blend of herbs and seasonings, so it has a milder taste. It cooks in just five minutes, so it's easy to serve anytime with anything, chicken, hamburgers, whatever's on the family menu. So try Uncle Ben's new five-minute fast cooking long grain and wild rice. The whole family will love its milder taste. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau on the metric system. You know, the worldwide trend today is toward a universal system of measurement, the metric system. The names of this new system may sound strange to you at first, but fortunately, there are only a few words that have to be learned for everyday use. And these are the millimeter, centimeter, meter, and kilometer for describing length and distance, the milliliter and liter for capacity or volume, the gram, kilogram and ton for weight, the kilometer per hour for highway speed, and the degree Celsius or centigrade for temperature. You're already using some of these terms more than you may realize. For example, when you go to the supermarket, you see weights expressed in grams on more and more packaged items. Now, for more information on this whole metric system, Write to Metric Information Office, National Bureau of Standards, Washington, D.C. Ken and Martha Harris would seem to be in enough trouble, just as things are. Martha has collapsed from exhaustion and exposure, and Ken, carrying her the rest of the way to the cottage, is near exhaustion himself. He plods through the nightmare of snow to another nightmare. For what awaits him at the cottage, if he makes it, is far more terrifying than any accumulation of clean white snow. Martha, I can see it. I can see the cottage. Oh, Lord, no, Martha. Don't go to sleep. We're going to make it. Don't let yourself sleep. Oh, we're here. Look. Here are the steps. So heavy. Why should she be so heavy? Martha. Oh, worst thing. Panic. I'm tired. That's all. The keys. The keys. Martha. Do you think you could stand up for a minute while I just get into my pocket? Uh, I've got only these two hands and I... Martha, could you just try... Uh, hey, there you are helping. Oh, thank heaven. You're not... Okay, now, just... Oh, holy man. You hear me, Martha? With my head to his. Oh. Now, just... Just as far as... Just to the rocking chair, Remember? You always liked the rocking chair. Uh, are we, we home? We're, we're in the cottage, Martha. We made it. Going to be all right. Uh, can I just take a little sleep? No, no, no. Not yet. Uh, I have, I've got to start a fire. It'll warm the room up. But until it does, I want you to stay awake. Oh, poor kid. I can't give you such a hard if, time. If you just stay awake, everything will be all right. Just don't go to sleep. Good fire going. You're wrapped up in blankets. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, my, my feet are beginning to hurt like anything, Ken. Good sign. Means the circulation's coming back. I'm so tired. Well, it's warm enough now for you to take a nap. I, I've got to go out for a while. Out? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm all right. My feet don't even feel cold. I'm dressed for it better than you are. I've got to go back and get the box of groceries. Oh, Ken, can't you? Can't we just forget the stupid groceries? I, I don't see how you can make it all by yourself back to where you left that car. Well, I've got two. There are three cans of tomato soup in the pantry. Now, that's all. 
can't it? Does it look like somebody's been here? Not that I can tell so far. I'll go over everything better when I get back. I wish you wouldn't leave. Come on, it's not all that far. Well, the truth is, I... I'm scared. Scared? Well, if somebody was in here last night, what, what if they came back? In this kind of weather? Forget it. I, I guess you're right. Okay. Okay, okay. I better get going. I may be a while. It'll be pretty slow, especially on the way back with that load of groceries. Okay. I feel as though I could sleep for about a week anyway. Good. You just sit there and fall asleep. See you later. Ken, be careful. I'll be fine. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who? Ken? Ken! Be quiet. Don't make any noise. What the hell are you doing wandering around without even any shoes on? I just... What is it? What's the matter? Ken, there's somebody in the cottage right now, right this minute. What makes you think that? I heard them right after you left. A man and a woman. They were laughing. Right after I left? Yeah, I, I, I went to sleep. I couldn't have been more than a minute, and they woke me up with their laughing. But you must have dreamed it. No. Absolutely not. I was not dreaming. The laughing woke me up, and they, they kept on for a while. For a while after I was awake. Can I know I was awake? And then, then when I called out, they stopped. But did you look for them? No, I, 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 I couldn't. I was scared. Okay, I'll go check it out. Just let me get this carton out to the kitchen. It weighs a ton. Oh, I, I'll come with you while you look for them. All right. Feet still hurt? Some, but not as much as they did. I, I can walk all right. Okay, okay. I want to check out on the utility room first. Well, you were in there when you got the firewood, weren't you? Oh, I'll look again. You just stay here, just outside the door. No, I I'm coming in with you. Will you stop that? Just once, will you do as I say without giving me an argument? Oh, all right. Just outside the door here. Just until I've had a look around. I said all right. Nothing's been disturbed in here. No, everything's normal in the utility room, as far as I can tell. Well, what was all that stamping you were doing? Oh, some, some, just some snow I had left on my boots. Could you tell where the laughing was coming from? I mean, what direction? No, no, not really. It sounded like from... Well, kind of all around. All around, okay. Let's, let's check the bedroom. Actually, it was... It was sort of odd. It, it seemed to come from farther away than in the house. Silly, of course, but... You know, it had to be in the house. It could be a skating party from Gibbsville or somewhere. The lake must be frozen over. It came from inside the cottage. Well, you can see there's nobody in the bedroom. Where would it have come from? You were in the living room. There's nobody in the kitchen, the utility room, or the bedroom. Now, that's all the rooms we have, Martha. I didn't dream it. You want another hot dog, Ken? Good Lord, no. I've had three, not to mention about a pound of French fries and two-thirds of that big can of baked beans. For a lady who doesn't know how to cook over an open fire, you whip up a pretty solid meal. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Huh. It would be kind of cozy, wouldn't it? With only the lamp and the firelight. Except that... Except that what? I didn't dream that laughing, Ken. There was someone in here. You want to know what I think? I think you and Stu were both dreaming about last night and about today. Now, I've been over this place with a fine tooth comb. There couldn't have been anybody in here. No locks were broken. There's not so much as a chair out of place. Everything is exactly the way we left it last fall. Well, I don't know about Stu. I didn't dream it. There's nobody but us in the house now. At least we know that. And I've got a full belly. And the fire makes the room nice and cozy. 
You know, Ken, I'm worried about Stu. He's so... But he seems so lost without Claudia. Yeah. I feel sorry for him, too. But he's not the first guy whose wife walked out on him. No, that's just it. He can't believe she did. I mean, he can't believe she would without at least telling him she was going. Yeah, well, she didn't tell him, did she? What more proof does he want? <laughs> You've got it just backwards from his thinking. He thinks her not telling him is proof that something happened to her. Yeah, yeah. He also sees people in other people's cottages. Hey, I just had an idea. We left the Scrabble board out here, didn't we? we up, up on the shelf in the bedroom closet. How about a game of Scrabble? Mm, I don't know. I... Oh. Okay, if I can keep my mind on it. Give me a chance to beat you for once. I'll go get it. And Martha, mm -hmm. if you say you want to come with me, so help me, I'll clobber you. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll sit right here. I won't budge. I'm pretty sure I left it in there up on the closet shelf. I won't be a second. Don't hurry. I won't be going anywhere. It's no good, I tell you. I can't do it. What did you say, Ken? Well, I didn't say anything. Can't do it or won't do it. All right, won't, if you like it better that way. We'll see about that. Ken! Ken! What? What's the matter? What happened? Ken, I heard them again. Th they were talking this time. Didn't you hear them? I didn't hear a sound. You, you mean the people you thought you heard laughing before? I did hear them. But they were talking this time. He said he couldn't do something and... Ken, where are they? Well, I, I'm afraid they're just in your head, Martha. Oh, no, you don't. Just because you didn't hear them, you're not going to make me out to be off my rocker. Come on, come on, Martha. You're nervous, you're upset, and who wouldn't be? So am I. Okay, let's, let's play one game of Scrabble and get to bed. I piled enough blankets on that bed to smother us, never mind keep us warm. All right. But I heard them. They've got to be here somewhere. Ken? Ken, wake up. Ken, come on, will you wake up? Mm -hmm. What? What? What's the... What is it, Martha? Look. At what? Can't you see it? The flickering? The fireplace in the living room is burning. Oh. Well, it's probably just part of a log that wasn't all the way burned up. Smoldered for a while and then... Then caught again. Go to sleep, Martha. No, that's a fire. A whole fire. We couldn't see an ember or something from clear back here. What are you doing? I'm going in there to see what's going on. A fire like that just doesn't build itself out of ashes. Somebody built it. Don't you want to catch them? All right. Now, don't talk. We'll just sneak up to the living room door and see what's going on, okay? Okay, okay. Did you hear something? Not a damn thing. Now, don't talk anymore. Just let me get a look through the door and... <gasps> Good Lord. I can't understand why you're so close. Claudia. Dear God. It's Claudio. Shh, be quiet, I hear you. I don't think so, Martha. I don't think they can hear us. It's not as if I dragged you here or something. You might as well have. You knew I didn't want to come. It can't be. It can't. That man looks like you. Yes. Apparently, it can be, Martha. Ken Harris stands beside his wife, watching a scene in which he, he, Ken Harris, sits in front of the fireplace talking to Claudia Ralston. That adds up to two Ken Harrises in the same house at the same time. Impossible? Well, very unlikely, except that there it is. And Claudia, 
the long-absent Claudia. Is she real? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Three. I can't find a decent job. I mean, it's not like I haven't tried. There must be somebody who wants me, but I can't find him. In this entire city, now, there must be one person I can hire with the qualifications I'm looking for. Well, why can't I find him? There's a fast, modern employment service bringing people and jobs together. Job service. Last year, we filled over 4 million jobs. In 40 years, we've never charged a fee. We use computers, personal interviews, anything that puts the right person in the right job. If you don't have a job, or you're in the wrong job, or you're looking for someone to do a job, call Job Service, or you may never find each other. For Job Service, contact your State Employment Service. A message on behalf of the U.S. Department of Labor. Ever been riding along in your car and hear a radio announcement asking you to go to your local hospital to make an emergency blood donation? For donors with B negative blood. Happens every day. Call that hospital How come blood is in such short supply that emergency pleas have to be made? Because not enough people give blood. It's that simple. We know you're busy these days, but think, you're alive and well, too. And you could help others to be that way. Your easy donation of blood to Red Cross or any other volunteer blood bank actually helps a number of people. Because the blood you give is split up into various components, sometimes as many as five. It gives life to a whole lot of people. So don't wait for an emergency announcement before you call your local Red Cross blood bank. If you call now, there doesn't have to be a blood emergency. In today's weather, sunny and mild, high near... It is held by some that events of great dramatic impact may leave their imprint so deeply stamped upon the scene of their occurrence that it is never totally erased. Not by the absence of the participants, nor by the passage of time. Perhaps this is what we're witnessing here in the living room of the Harris's summer cottage. Perhaps something is about to happen which has happened before and left its indelible mark on Shadow Lake. Ken, how, how could it be you? You're standing right here beside me, and yet you're sitting there in the living room talking to Claudia. I, I, I don't see how it could be. It's something beyond our understanding. They're not really here, Martha. I mean, not really in this place at this time. I, I don't understand it either. I just, I just want to get away from it. She's talking again. It isn't easy for me either, Ken. Not one bit easier than it is for you. I told you in the beginning, weekends are out. I hate lying to Martha. You know that. So we steal a weekday when we can. We come out here and have a cold, miserable afternoon and a short evening together and then go back to the city and wait for our next chance to sneak away. We said in the beginning and you agreed that... I know what we said in the beginning and I can't stand this hole in the corner business much longer. That was all that was ever meant to be. You should never let it start. Well, we did let it start. You can't undo that. And now it's not enough. It's too much. I think we have to stop now. It's gone much further than we meant it to. They... They just... Faded away. They're gone. They were never here, Martha. They weren't real. And the fire is dead. And everything... Is just... Gone. It was... I don't know. Some, some kind of... Illusion. We imagined it. It was something that happened before, wasn't it? Something that actually happened. You and Claudia out here together. Martha, if you're just... Which weekend was it, Ken? The time you had to go to Chicago to close that deal with 
Whoever it was that time. That's enough. We're going to get dressed and get the hell out of this place before it drives us both nuts. Now, we're... No. No, we're not. We're staying right here. But, Martha... I'm scared. But I have a feeling they'll be back. And I'm staying till the end. All right. If you want to see the end, we'll stay. You'll be sorry, but we'll stay. Operator. Hi, Mabel. This is Lou Potts. Hello, Lou. What in the world are you doing up this time of night? Oh, inventory. Have to do it sooner or later, and I wasn't anxious to leave the store in this kind of weather. Oh, ain't it awful? Still snowing, looks like, out the window. Yep, still snowing. What can I do for you? Do you happen to know, is the sheriff still in his office, or did he close up and go home? In his office five, ten minutes ago. Why? Want me to ring him? No, I just thought if it turns out he's still in his office, maybe I'd stop by and say hello. Some kind of trouble going on, Lou? <laughs> Wouldn't you know it before I did if there was? Doing out on a night like this for Pete's sake. Oh, got something bothering me. I think ice is cold out there. Yeah, it happens every winter, seems like. How come you're still around this late at night? Oh, waiting for folks like you to show up. Got something bothering them. Well, what is it you got on your mind? Well, you remember the Harris's? Got a summer place up there by the lake? Harris? Harris. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Pretty little thing she is. Well, they stopped in at the store this afternoon and filled up with a box of provisions to take out to the cottage with them. Today? I told them I'd near in so many words they was damn fools. I've been watching all day, waiting for them to come, and I ain't seen them. I would have, too, if they drove past. I must be stuck up there. Well, yeah, I guess there's nothing for it, but uh, I go on up there and see, or try to. <laughs> I knew it, Ken. They're coming back. I knew they would. We shouldn't be here. We should have gone away. Shh, be quiet. You want us to stop seeing each other. You had your fun, and now you're ready to go back to Martha. Is that it? We agreed in the very beginning that it would have to end this way, Claudia. And I may have agreed to that at the start, or seemed to. But I won't have it that way now. I don't really see that you have much choice. You don't. No. I love Martha, Claudia. This was never more than just a... Just... A little affair. Is that what you mean? A little fun. Something you could... Toss aside whenever you got tired of it. Claudia, we both agreed. Oh, you and we're both agreed. I, I don't give a damn what I agreed to. All right. to tell Martha tomorrow that you want a divorce. That's simple enough, isn't it? And if she asks you why, tell her. I won't do any such thing. You know that, Claudia. Do you want to bet? I won't. All right, then. I'll tell her myself. Her and Stu both. Let them do the divorcing. And don't you think they won't? I only hope Stu doesn't blow your brains out. You're not going to do that, Claudia. Do you think you can stop me? Yes. I think I can. You're not a very nice person, really. Yes, I'm quite sure I can stop you. They've faded away again. Just faded away as, as if they were nothing but... Here. Less than here, Martha. They're nothing at all. They're a memory. Okay, you've seen the end of it. Now, will you come away with me? Oh, no. That wasn't the end of anything, Ken, and you know it. Martha, I told her I love you. You heard me tell her that. Oh, yes, sure. After you... After you and she Martha, had... don't. Please, don't. Don't what... Cry? Not for a million dollars. I want us to leave this place now. 
You go if you like. I'm staying for the end. Well, they must have made it as far as the turnoff anyway. I ain't seen hide or hair of the car. Oh, there it is. Yep, up ahead there. That heap of snow? Yeah, it must be. Stop just this side of the turn off to the lake. I sure hope they had enough gas to keep the heater going. Else they're frozen to death by now. Yeah. Well, don't look like there's anybody in the car, Lou. I guess I'll just have to walk on up there myself. Why, you're as crazy as they are, Al. Uh, yep. Now you sit here and stay warm, Lou. I got snowshoes in the trunk. Son of a gun. Now who'd think of snowshoes? A night like this, a sheriff would. Don't know why I didn't open a grocery store instead of running for sheriff. It's weird. The way they they, they just materialize. It isn't real. Why are you looking at me like that, Ken? If you have anything silly in your mind, you can just forget it. Silly? Just don't look at me that way. What way, Claudia? As if you could... Almost as if you could, could kill me. I wouldn't, of course, if there were any other way. But there isn't. <gasps> Come on, Ken. You're... You're kidding. I won't have you telling Martha about you and me. I won't put her through a thing like that. If I have to kill you to prevent it, by then... Okay. Then I... I'm sorry. I... I'm sorry. I didn't realize you felt so strongly about it. We'll, we'll just forget the whole thing, okay? Well, don't just sit there shaking your head at me. I won't say a word to Martha. Or to Stu either about us, Ken. I promise you. I don't believe you. But that's just the point, Ken. I'm telling you, you can believe me. I promise. A moment ago, you said you don't give a damn what you promised. That was just... Oh, you know it was just talk. Oh, Ken, you've got, you've got to believe me. I can't. But if you don't... Oh, no, no, Ken. Please, please. It's only one alternative. No, no. I'm sorry, Claudia. Keep your hands off me. Don't touch me. If you, if you fight me, Claudia, it's only going to make it worse. Now, what's the good of that? Just a little more now. It will all be over in just a minute. Just a little while. And the whole thing will be behind us. Ken. Ken, you killed her. That was... That was the weekend she disappeared. You killed her. Yes. I couldn't figure anything else to do. But... Oh, God. A murderer. Martha, don't say that. Adulterer and murderer. Huh? What did you do with her? What did you do with... with her body? I tore some boards off the floor of the utility room and buried her under there. The utility room? You mean... She's under there now, under that floor right this minute? Yes. All last summer, every weekend, all last summer, we were out here laughing and having fun, and she... I wasn't having much fun. So, well, what do we do now? I go to the sheriff's office and give myself up. You intend to confess? What else is there to do? I'm glad it's over. I... I don't think I can walk to the car. I'll carry you. We can make it. There's 
Nobody else knows about this, is there? Just me. Nobody else even suspects. I, it doesn't matter. Now, I told you. I'm going to give myself up. I know what you told me. It would be so easy. What would be easy? You carry me part of the way. Far enough so I can't get back and then just leave me in the snow to die. The way you might have done yesterday. Martha. You're a murderer. You killed Claudia to save yourself. Why not me? I wouldn't. Martha, you know I wouldn't. Well, there's only one way to find out for sure, isn't there? Let's go. Ken Harris does not know that the sheriff is making his way toward the cottage. But the going is slow. It will be some time before the two meet. If Ken chooses to leave his wife to die of exposure, he can do it and get away with it. But will he? You may have it either way you want it or can believe it. Whatever you decide, I'll be back in a few minutes. Morning, Greenhaven State Prison. Today, Jerry Rice is getting out. He paid for his mistake. We paid too. About 10,000 tax dollars a year to keep him there. And unless he gets a job, he'll probably go back in. Wait till your daddy sees you. He's not going to recognize you. Are you excited? If you're someone with a job to give, you can do something about rising crime by giving a guy like Jerry Rice a job. He's been thoroughly screened so you'll know all about him. You complain about rising crime and the billions of tax dollars used to fight it. Nothing can fight it better than jobs. Welcome home, Daddy. Are you here forever? Forever, honey. The way to get this country working is to get people working. So if you have a job to give, call the National Alliance of Businessmen. Help America work. A public service message of this station and the Advertising Council. A murderer, a reluctant murderer, granted, has either been exposed for what he is or has been prodded to the brink of a further and even more despicable crime. And the force that brought him to this plight was supernatural, according to our present standards of what is and what is not natural. Could it be that there is a department of criminal investigation operating on a level not yet recognized by our very exact sciences? Our cast included Joan Lovejoy, Nat Poland, Joan Loring, Bob Caliban, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Lord, will the old goat never die? The bishop is dead. He asked for you at the last. Did you hear me, Carl? I hear you? Of course I did. And now, by heaven, you're going to hear me. Asked for me, did he? That slavering old hypocrite. Carl! <laughs> How could... He, he could no more stand the sight of me than I of him. But now he's gone and there's nothing to stop me. The estate is mine. The money is mine. Now I can rock the rafters, the seven deadly sins, the ten commandments. I'm going to commit all the first and I'll break all the second. Oh, 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 oh I'm going to cut such a swath. The devil himself will envy me. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
approaching the 11 o'clock hour now at KIXI. CBS News is next, then back to more of the bright and beautiful music that you enjoy. Good evening, Penny Tucker with you until 6 o'clock in the morning. Presently downtown, still holding at 50 degrees, 48 at the airport. Cloudy skies, occasional rain tonight. Filling the air with bright and beautiful music. This is KIXI, Seattle. It's exactly 11 p.m. CBS News. Congress has recessed for a 10-day vacation, failing to act on a major measure, which includes several programs to help fight the recession. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. The Memorial Day vacation for the lawmakers will last until June 2nd. They leave Washington without taking action on a $15 billion bill that includes funds for food stamps, unemployment compensation, veteran services, and other federal programs. Also left behind in the rush out of Washington were major housing and energy legislation. Administration officials say President Ford will announce a major energy policy action before he leaves for Europe next week. The president may decide to end controls on domestic oil prices and allow another $1 a barrel tariff on imported oil to take effect. More news in a moment. Get America rolling. Roll on America roll. Get on Goodyear radios. Roll on America roll. Here's big savings on Bigfoot. Goodyear's polysteel radial tire. Save 25% off the regular price on the tire that's built to keep its feet even in the rain. Get on Goodyear radios. Save America, save. Now through Tuesday at participating dealers and Goodyear service stores. Roll on America, roll. If you ever use a hemorrhoid preparation, you should know this. Vaseline Brands has news. It's Hemorrhoid ointment. Hemorrhoid works fast, helps protect with a proven medical ingredient for soothing occlusion. And Hemorrhoid gives you only this key ingredient, so it gives you more than the leading preparation. Now at your first sign of pain, burning, and itching, turn to soothing Hemorrhoid. Hemorrhoid from Vaseline Brands. Use only as directed. A major body of the United Nations has again taken action against Israel. Jack Curtis reports from Paris. The UN Education, Science, and Cultural Organization has again decided to exclude Israel from its activities. Despite the international storm of protest from artists and intellectuals following UNESCO sanctions against Israel last fall, the UN agency's governing board tonight voted overwhelmingly not to invite the Jewish state to a conference for Mediterranean nations next year. The United States cast the only dissenting vote. The U.S. is already withholding financial support from UNESCO until it reverses its anti-Israeli stand. Israeli representatives at tonight's meeting called the vote a grave decision, denying rights to a member state. Jack Curtis for CBS News, Paris. In Washington, John Scali, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., said any vote in the future to suspend Israel from the General Assembly should bring concrete retaliatory action from the United States. A major new military alliance is reported between the Soviet Union and Libya. The report comes from the semi-official newspaper Al-Aram in Cairo. It says Russia will supply Libya with thousands of tanks, rockets, and other weapons, and in return, Russia will be allowed to set up land, sea, and air bases in Libya. The nation's automakers are continuing the trend toward more production despite lower sales. The sales picture may continue to be substantially lower than it was last year. Gene Fogel of station WJR Detroit has a report. New car sales for the mid-10-day period in May are expected to show sales down 31% for the period compared to the same period of last year. Despite the grim forecast, though, Detroit automakers are continuing their stepped-up spring production with General Motors, Chrysler, and American Motors Corporation planning to operate all assembly plants during the coming work week, which will be shortened because of the holiday. Ford hasn't announced next week's production plans yet. It's the fourth consecutive week, though, that GM, Chrysler, and AMC will operate all of their plants, and indefinite layoffs next week in the auto industry will drop by at least 5,900 with work callbacks by GM and Chrysler. 
Industry-wide, though, some 183,000 blue-collar workers are on layoff this week. Gene Fogel for CBS News, Detroit. CBS News continues after this message. Are you an unpublished author? Do you have a book-length manuscript ready or almost ready for publication? Or do you know of anyone else who is an unpublished author? If so, Vantage Press invites you to write to a leading New York publisher for a free illustrated brochure titled To the Author in Search of a Publisher. It explains how you may have your manuscript printed and published in a matter of months. Just write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. Whether your subject is fiction, non-fiction, poetry, or even scientific, specialized, or controversial, this 52-page brochure shows you how to arrange for prompt publication. To get your copy, write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. That's GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. If this is your first book, you'll find this free brochure especially valuable and informative. Write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. American and Soviet officials have given the final go-ahead for the orbital link-up of an Apollo and a Soyuz spaceship in mid-July. Space officials from both countries signed a readiness report for the mission. A three-man American crew is scheduled to link up with a two-man Soviet space crew over the Black Sea on July 17th. The two ships will fly joined together for two days of experiments. Doug Poling, CBS News. CBS for Seattle, KIXI. Good evening, six minutes past 11 o'clock.